Hi, and welcome to the Nate Game and Other Stuff. Come on in. Welcome to The Knitting Game and Other Stuff. This is episode 76, and I'm calling this one Birthday Presents. So, um, I'm Leslie, your host of The Knitting Game and Other Stuff, and if you want to get in touch with me and figure out what I'm doing, what I'm up to, I'm on Ravelry, Twitter, Pinterest, Plurk. Check out the show notes at MyOrdinaryJourney.com and you can figure out all that stuff. So, uh, let's get into it. I've been gone for a few weeks, so again, so let's uh, welcome a few new folks. We've got um, Nana Pay, and that's Carol. Cat's Straight, that's Cat. And, sorry, I was looking at my daughter. Fun for Tracy. And that's Tracy. So, hi everybody, and welcome to the Nitty Game. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit more proactive in the forums. You may have seen that, so hopefully uh, you get a little bit more enjoyment out of actually being a group member. You know, they always said, you know, the old, well, I guess they use it nowadays, the American Express commercials membership has its privileges. I don't even know if that's really true anymore, but hey, sounds good. All right, so we didn't have any birthdays last week, so it was kind of like, eh, I didn't miss anybody because I didn't record. I did do the show notes last week. I just didn't record. Um, life has been getting in the way. Darn life. It just work and all that good stuff. So uh, let's start off with some birthdays. We've got Strickland66, and that is Michelle. Knitter2, that's Laurel. Sabra, Sabrina, R.C. Hall, and that's Rochelle, and Peachy1751, Peg. So, happy birthday, guys. Like I said, birthday presents. So, uh, shout-outs, announcements, general chit-chat and whatnot. Um, yes, I was out a little bit last week. Uh, I didn't get to take the train at all last week because the the coworker I have, she was out of town, so she couldn't pick me up from the train station, so I had to fend for myself last week and drive up, so I was kind of in a ugh, mood all week, and with my back being not, it's still not right. Um, it's better though, which is good. I actually went for a walk last night, and I posted the details of that, so... Um, it was sad. It was pretty pathetic, but at least it's a start. So my block where I live um, is a half mile. It's 0.55 miles around, and it took me a total of 12 minutes, and that it does include stopping to pet a dog and um, turning off the little phone app thing that was, was tracking me. So, um, and I'm going to remember this episode so that you can see, I'm going to keep my hands up here. I'm going to raise the roof a little bit because I realized last week when I was showing you things, the last show, right? I had my hands down here and I thought you could see, no. So I'm going to keep it up here. So y'all aren't like trying to crane your head to see something that is not there, right? So nobody wants that. That's kind of crazy. Um... So this week was a little bit better. Yesterday I got to take the train up and that is always a magnificent thing. I am just loving the train. It just makes my life so much easier. So yesterday I was able to get up, get dressed, get ready to go, get to work, do an eight hour day, come home. I got to see my husband and son before they went off to the gym. Um, I got to see my daughter. So I started dinner and I made this riff on um, like beef stroganoff and instead of like the beef cubes because they're never tender enough, I made these beefy onion um, meatballs and I did that. So here's a quick little recipe. You take a pound of beef, a pound of pork, 
you put it in a bowl. You take a um, thing of onion soup mix, another dash or two of dehydrated onions, salt, a little salt, and a little pepper, and a squeeze of ketchup. You mush it all together and you make these, like, you, you want to make little or little meatballs. So they're like bite size, not big ones, because that takes forever to cook. And I cooked mine on 425 for about a half an hour. And I just kind of rolled them once. Then what you do is you take a can of, um, you, when, when those are in the oven cooking, you go for a walk for about 12 to 15 minutes. Then you come back and you start the gravy, which was a can of French onion soup, a can of golden mushroom soup, a can of water, a can of mushroom stems, and a block of Philadelphia cream cheese. And that's the sauce. And then you start and you boil some noodles. So you do like the big egg noodle, extra fluffy egg noodles, and you boil those until they're done. You drain them, you put them back in a pot with a stick of butter and probably about a tablespoon of uh, chopped minced garlic or if you have garlic powder to taste. And the meatballs come out a little salty on the saltier side so you don't have to put any salt in the um, gravy or on the noodles or in the peas or vegetable of your choice. And that was dinner last night. So I got home from work started dinner, went for a walk, came home, finished dinner. I was like finished eating by the time my husband and son got home. I was sitting there watching the football game, enjoying life and knitting. Hey, hey, I had time to do that. Not to mention the time I got to now on the train. So that was really nice. So that's been the week. So this week has been a little bit better. And um, obviously, it is three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm at home, so that means I took the day off. Well, I took the day off because I was supposed to work Sunday at work, but my schedule got changed. So I was supposed to work Sunday at work and then have today off like my Sunday. Well, that didn't work out, so, and I'd already made plans for today. So I just took the day off. I took a day of PTO and I played hooky today. So I went and I got up this morning. I went to Panera and got a breakfast sandwich. And oh, how did I start the day? So I come out of the room and my daughter um, says, hey mom, you've got something in the microwave. I'm like, okay. So I come downstairs and I open the microwave and there's a cake, a birthday cake with a big three and eight in it. And there's cards on the inside of the microwave. So. My husband, unbeknownst to me last night when he and my son went to the gym, picked me up a birthday cake, birthday candles, and cards. So I had this cake this morning to look at. I haven't had any yet. And then I went to Panera. I got um, a, a mocha frappe and an Asiago bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich because I love those. And then I came home and I ate that and I watched the end of the fifth element. And then I went and got my husband from his office. So we had planned to do lunch together. So I picked up him and three of us co-workers. And um, that's always fun because he works at the FBI Academy at Quantico. So he has to put me in for like this visit request and everything so I can get on the Academy compound. So I picked everybody up for lunch and we went out to a Japanese uh, restaurant near base, near post. And there I met a very generous um, contributor to our guild. She donated a never used, it's not brand new, she bought it back in the early 2000s, but it's never been used, never been put together, Ashford Traveler spinning wheel. So she donated it to the guild, so I picked it up. And then we had lunch with my husband and uh, some of his coworkers. And then I took them back to their office and I kind of hung out with my husband for a little bit and I got to see where he worked and he does all the magic, where all the magic happens. So that was kind of neat to be back on base and seeing people with M16s and rifles and hearing the sound of small arms fire kind of takes me, takes me back uh, about 
12 years <laughs> takes me back so after I finished that I came home and um, I set up to do today's show once my son came home and I knew the dog wouldn't be barking um, I'm recording so here we are so uh, yes today is my birthday so that's why it's called birthday presents now my husband he is very aware of my habits and my likes and dislikes and this guy he'll buy me a couple ounces of cashmere he he does his research so one year I got like this luxury box of fiber I have yet to spin it because I'm terrified to because it's like really nice stuff so you like baby camel down and cashmere like real cashmere um, and a whole bunch of stuff. Then one year he got me a luxury grab bag of yarn from Webbs. Then he has bought so many knitting books for me that I don't even have to keep a list on Amazon anymore. Um, they just recommend books for him to buy me. And this time it kind of backfired because he bought me a copy of Knit to Flatter which I'd already purchased. So I am now the proud owner of two copies of Knit to Flatter by um, Amy Herzog. So what am I going to do? I asked him if it was okay. If he wanted to return the extra copy, great. But I asked him if it would be okay if I gave away a copy, um, the extra copy of the book. Um, to one of my viewers. So here is what you have to do. You have to go to the um, Knitting Game and Other Stuff group on Ravelry and answer the question of what pattern in Knit to Flatter you would like to knit and why. Personally, I have to say, I kind of, this is the like the squared, I think it's called the square cardi, this one down here at the bottom in the brown. I like that neckline for some reason. So it could be something like, I like the neckline, or um, that she's got one here with a cowl. I like the cowl neck, or I like the length or the shape of the sleeves or where it flares or where it bunches up. Just something about the pattern that you like and which one um, you would like to knit the most. And before the next recording of the knitting game, because as life has shown this summer, it's a little bit more dynamic than it has been in the past. So the next time I record, that's when I will give away this copy of Knit to Flatter. So go answer the questions on the forums. All right, so let's get into moving on events. A couple of events that are coming up. On October the 12th is the Fredericksburg Spinners and Weavers Gale Let's Stitch charity event. On uh, September 28th and 29th, it's the Shenandoah Fiber Festival. And October 5th and 6th will be the Virginia Fall Fiber Festival. So we're getting into festival season and uh, cooler weather had been here and then it left. And then it came back again and then it left. Um, so it's horribly hot tonight. I'm going to an outdoor concert and for my birthday present and it's going to be hot. Thankfully, I sprung for the tickets under the pavilion, so I'm not like out in the open, but still, it's going to be warm. Um, all right, so I haven't been very proactive with forums lately, so I posted in the forums you know, just some chit chat type stuff. And um, one of the forum posters asked if I could explain what the knitting game was and or is, and I would be glad to do that. So I will be right back.
And we're back. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so the knitting game. What is it? What was it? Um, what it originally was intended to do was for me to be able to take a book like Knit to Flatter and pick um, five patterns out of the book. And I would put these patterns up for a vote and the viewer would vote on which pattern that they liked the most. Now, what would happen is the next week I would announce the winner from the, um, it's a head to head competition. So I would only like release two patterns at a time and the winner from the first week would move on to the second. The winner from the second week would move on to the third and so on and so on till we got to the fourth round and then um, the ultimate winner would be a pattern that I would knit for the show and I would talk about um, like some of my likes and dislikes. I would sometimes give you all the opportunity to vote on the yarn I used and different aspects like that. Um, and then I got a lot behind on projects and I got overwhelmed. So I tried to pick knitting games that were a little bit longer term. So instead of, you know, every month having a new winner and trying to try to knit something that may have been too big of a project, um, I decided I would have you guys help me rank my, uh, patterns that had been gifted to me. So the winner of that one was the Vittorio shawl, which is this one right here. So this one I finished, you know, not too long ago, but that was like an American Idol style um, knitting thing or, or knitting game where folks would vote every week and the two lowest tally voting getting patterns, I would send one off the show and um, we got to the end of the American Idol style voting round and that's where the Victoria won and I knit that and yay that one got finished. So I was still a little bit bogged down with projects and my most recent type knitting game was I asked the viewers if they would like to see me knit to zero. Yes or no, should I do it? And it was a resounding yes. So I have been for the majority of the year um, knitting to zero. So I either have to knit it and finish it or I have to frog it officially. And we just never go back there and we never speak of those things again. So that is where we currently are right now. That is where we are and I am knitting to zero in theory. And I'm getting there very slowly but surely. Um, I have had some fall downs. I cast on and knit in a month the um, Hitchhiker and I loved it and I felt like I just zoomed through it. And then I cast on a hat for my daughter um, because it was under the purview of design. If I'm designing something, the consensus is that it is not against my knitting to zero um, goal. So if I'm designing something, I can knit it. All right, so that is the knitting game. So the last pattern to win an honest to goodness knitting game where it went up each week against a different pattern was the exotic draped ruffle. And it's been in my queue. It's been sitting there. It's been a knitting game project that has languished that has just sat there and I haven't really done anything with it, but because it made it onto the show notes, I consider that as one of the projects that I had to choose from to either knit it or frog it or just say I wasn't going to do it or what have you. So I technically consider it against my knitting to zero goal. So I started it. I started it on Sunday. 
because I realized I had nothing to knit on the train. I am not going to knit some complicated lace piece. Even the um, Downton Abbey gauntlets were a little much for train knitting. So I had to find something like socks where I was just knitting in the round or a very simple pattern that was easy to memorize and repeat. So I decided that I would pick up the um, exotic drape ruffle. Now I originally started with one yarn, didn't like how it was coming out. Um, so I frogged that and started with a different yarn. And the yarn I chose was some hand spun. Now this is some hand spun I did probably a year ago. Y'all might remember it. It is called Little Fishes. Um, this is yarn. I got this from the Spunky Eclectic Yarn Club. It is the fir or fiber club. It's the first fiber club that I ever was participating in. So here's the yarn. And as you can, hopefully you can see that it has spun into it various shades of blue glass beads throughout. So how this yarn is done, see here's a, I don't know if you can see that. I can see the bead dangling there. So how I did this yarn is I spun a single and it's a uh, merino, I believe. And what I ended up doing is I had my daughter pre-string all of these blue beads onto this golden sewing thread. And basically all I did was I applied the single with the sewing thread and I fed the blue glass beads up at different intervals onto into the yarn as I was plying it. So this has blues, yellows, and blacks in different combinations. And I loved it. I loved spinning it. I was inspired by it. And when I originally, when the blue uh, exotic drape ruffle originally won, this is the yarn I had originally intended to use. For some reason I forgot and I picked up this other yarn that I was going to use that was in my stash. And I didn't like how it was coming out. But this I love. So here is the exotic drape ruffle right now and I am loving the fact that it's doing this striping thing that I just kind of it didn't even dawn on me that because it wasn't barber pulled that it would come out striped so I've got and it's not sequential striping because I spun it however I wanted to in the single so I've got like little pops of like here, there's this little pop of yellow out of nowhere. And throughout you can see where the beads are here and there. And when you look at it close up, like I can see close up the gold thread, but when you look at it at a distance, it just looks like it's kind of striped and it's very airy because it's like um, sometimes it's a lace weight, sometimes it's a fingering weight, and sometimes it's a sport weight yarn um, and it's knit on size 9 needles, 9 US. So you get this kind of open work. It's, it, you know, it's done in a ribbed pattern and it's just very squishy and soft and it's just so fun and it really it's very easy to remember how to knit on the train so um, I am happy to say that I have actually started a new project but not really I'm working on a knitting game project again so that makes me feel good and I love using my own hand spun yarn and I love the fact that it's my first art yarn, like purposeful art yarn. So that is even cooler. And since it's hand spun, I have a really great track record of actually finishing 
hand spun yarn project. So I'm really looking forward to that being finished. So that was an update of the knitting game. And now I'm going to move on to some other stuff. So what else am I working on? Um, I am working on my Rocky Coast cardigan. That's kind of like my home knitting um, when I'm home. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's getting pretty, pretty decent size. As a matter of fact, let's see. Hopefully you can see this. See where the blue uh, stitch marker is? That is where you saw it the last time on the show. I finished knitting to the 14 or whatever inch length from under the underarms that I needed. And I am currently working on the bottom edge ribbing. And I have about six more rows of that to go. So um, before long, I'm going to be uh, either knitting sleeves or picking up stitches to do the ribbing on the inside and around the collar. So, um, I have tried it on. I am liking where the length is. I am liking how it fits across the back. I'm liking how it fits across the arms. It's not going to be too small, and I'm sorry for the clinking, but this thing is huge because, you know, I'm a big girl, so to try to show it to you all in entirety is um, kind of futile. But I keep it in my big sweater bag, project bag. So that keeps everything pretty, pretty well together and I don't have to worry about it. So uh, the only other thing I have to show you that I've worked on in the last two weeks knitting wise is a finished object. So this is the nightmare hat that I knit for my daughter. It is a complete little hipster hat, I have got to tell you. So, let me tell you how this construction goes. So this is the one I was designing. I did a provisional cast on here at the top. And then I knit this tube down, all, and it was, it's all a tube. So I started with 90 stitches and I ended with 90 stitches. It's just a tube and it's just knit, the whole tube. So when I ran out of the Spartacus dies in the Sally from the Tim Burton series color, this is the outside. Then I transitioned to this wonderful blue brown kind of color. Um, from Wild Hair Fiber Studios. I picked that up at Spin Quest and I knit that down until um, I had a little bit more yardage on this. I had 460 yards of the Wild Hair Fiber Studios. So I had a little bit left over. So I knit till it was about the same size as the Sally from the Tim Burton. Um, maybe a little shorter, but that's because I didn't want this to show on the outside at all when you had it the other way around. And then you just take it at the bottom when you finish, you do a loop through all the stitches and you pull it tight, pull it tight, and then you close up the top of the inside, then you pull that through to the outside, and then you pick up that provisional cast on with extra stitches, I mean with extra yarn, you leave yourself a long enough tail to pick up the provisional cast on. And what you do is you hold the wrong side of the inside up a little bit. So when you're closing up the top and doing your stitches because you do it through the fabric of both layers, that way it keeps the top on the inside secure so it doesn't come out and it stays at the right length. And there you go. Uh, no pom-pom because that would have looked kind of goofy on a hipster hat, but she loves it and she's been wearing it and she just absolutely is enjoying it. And what I did is I held the yarn double and I used uh, US 9s 
and I held, it's a fingering weight yarn. I held them double on both the inside and the outside to give it a little bit so it wouldn't pull quite so much and give it an interesting color pattern. Because you can kind of see where it goes pink, brown, green, blue, pink, brown, green, blue. You can kind of see where it has, it has pulled a little bit, but that's okay. So that is the hipster nightmare hat that I knit for my daughter. She loves it. So that's all that matters. And it, let me tell you, it was fun to knit because it was just all knitting. All knitting. So in Time Out, I still have the Downton Abbey Mystery uh, of the Gauntlets. So once I finish, once I finish the draped ruffle, and once I finish the Sayuri sweater and the gauntlets, I'm done with the knitting to zero thing. Which is good because Christmas knitting is coming up. And I might have to say, well, I'm not knitting to zero anymore. I'm stashing to zero. We'll see how that goes. I've been throwing that idea around with just using what I have in my stash because I have a crap ton of sock yarn. Um, that is a, uh, a literal measurement, a crap ton of sock yarn. I have two sweater quantities worth, three. I have three sweater quantities worth of yarn. So I can do three sweaters, tons of socks, a couple of shawls, um, I think I'd be good. Plus, I have more fiber than I could ever hope to spin. So if I run out of yarn, I'll just spin some more. Which takes me to spinning. I didn't bring the bobbin in here right now because it is such a fine... It's, I don't want to fiddle with it too much, but I am spinning the Spectrum Poonies from Gourmet Stash. And they go from black to dark gray to a light gray and then red yellow orange blue green indigo violet and I am spinning those like thinner than thin like there's some parts where I have no idea how they're staying together that's how thin they are like thread thin thinner than sewing thread thin those ponies want to spin thin so I don't know what I'm going to do with those. I've thought about applying them with some nylon sewing thread, some clear sewing thread, because I don't want to lose any yardage. So that takes out the three ply because I don't want to lose the color progression either. So I have two options. I can leave it or three options. I can leave it as a single and that's not going to work because it's too thin. Or I can ply it with another yarn or thread somehow. Um, and I'm thinking of doing clear so you still preserve the essence of that color progression and you don't introduce anything new. The other thing I could do would be to chain ply it or Navajo ply it and then I would lose the yardage because I think even though it's like two ounces of fiber, which, you know, you usually get a four ounce bump at two ounces of fiber at the weight that I'm spinning this, I could conceivably get several hundred yards. Like I'm talking, I'm expecting maybe four, five, six hundred yards. That's how thin this stuff is spinning. So I don't really want to end up with a hundred yards of a fingering weight and a color progression because then I can't really do anything with that. And I feel that that's just a waste of time because I want to be able to use my hand spun or give it away. But that's my plan. So that's what I have for spinning. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Please, there's no voting, but I do have a contest. And, um... Yeah, birthday presents for all. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing my brightly lit face because I'm not used to recording at 3.30 in the afternoon. So I feel like I've got lights here, lights here, lights behind me. I've got sunroom windows, lights, sunshine. I got light everywhere. 
So if you can't see me and if you can't see my color of the yarn, I, I'm sorry. I'll show you more. I think that probably gets it really nice. Can you tell? I really, I so am digging this yarn. I love it. I love it, love it. See? See the beads? See the beads? All right, guys. I'm going to edit this bad boy, and I'm going to put it right up because I miss doing the show. So I'll see you guys hopefully next week. All right? Until then. Bye.